Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders MCC offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today or pick up one of the Connections flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, MCCLA. And find us also on Facebook. And join us in making Founders MCC your one-stop spiritual portal. This is your first Sunday at Founders. You are our guest. We would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center. And meet some new friends. We'd love to answer your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. Or a cup of tea. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out our welcome tablet. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you're joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website. And let us know that you're joining us. Founders MCC is a place of diverse and welcome. A place of healing and acceptance. A place of deep spirituality and transformation. A place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Angeles. Please join with me in the words of the call to worship, which are a leader and people response. The God who is greater than we will ever understand is, is humble to become God. one of us. The God who is more loving than our hearts dare imagine gives us more grace than we ever realize. The God who is wiser than we will ever know teaches us all we need to become God's children. As we begin our worship today, we light a candle for all those who have lost their lives in the recent typhoon that has hit the Philippines. We pray for all those affected and for all those who are providing aid and relief at this time of devastation. May we be reminded, O oh God, that we are all in this together and come together to help provide the necessary aid and restore services. Be with those who mourn their losses and be their comfort and strength, O oh God. Be with us as we do our part specifically for our churches in the Philippines, our Filipino community here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, and as we raise funds to send their way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now rise with me as we're able, as we worship this morning, forward through the ages.
is present with us. May we be forward through the ages this morning as we gather in this sacred space today. May we be reminded of all those who have come before us and those that we will lead into the future. And in this spirit, this joy of who you are, on this Veterans Day weekend, may we be reminded of our responsibility to be agents of peace and agents of transforming this world. Let peace be here on earth and let it begin with me. And know, Holy One, join us as we worship you, the God that has been through all the ages and who shows up this morning at Founders MCC. God's blessing upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It really is a joy to welcome you to worship as we gather in the name of all that is holy and in the sacred consciousness of Christ who joins with us this morning. Uh, we're glad that you are with us today. Uh, we're also glad that uh, you may have chosen to be with us for the very first time this morning. And so I invite you, if you are with us for the very first time today, if you would indulge my spirit, if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, so that we can welcome you to worship this morning. It really is a joy to welcome you. Our ushers will get to you, but please do accept this welcome pack as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us. Uh, inside, you'll find more information about our congregation and also a way in which you may be connected with us. Uh, we truly believe that being a church is not just what we do on Sunday mornings, but what we do throughout the week as we continue to transform our lives and through that, transform the world. So welcome to each and every one of you. We also want to welcome especially those who are joining us online this morning. Uh, we know that we have a number of folks from around the world who join us every Sunday morning um, here at Founders MCC. They may not be literally with us in the building, uh, but wherever they are around the world, they are worshiping with us. And so we want to welcome you this morning. Uh, please remember to check in for us as we invite every single one in our own congregation to check in this morning, uh, signing in our welcome pads, um, but also sign in online. There is a place for you right on that homepage that you can click right now and you can let us know that you are worshiping with us and also let us know if we can be of service to you as agents of ministry, as agents of Christ in the world today. So welcome to each and every one of you. As you came in, our ushers would have given you orders of worship, and inside you'll find all of the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks. You'll also find much, much more information about our campus and where things are located. Of course, if you're with us for the first time today, you need to know where anything is on the campus. Please do see any one of the ushers or check in with the person who sat next to you. They may know uh, where things are, but please uh, know that this is a great campus and we want to allow you to explore it uh, and to be a part of who we are this morning. We don't usually on a Sunday morning make announcements. Uh, those are left to your uh, discretion to make sure that you take home your orders of worship. Uh, but I do want to point out uh, one thing, uh, two things specifically today. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a garage sale here um, on, at Founders MCC on Saturday, November the 16th. Uh, that will benefit our MCC churches in the Philippines. Um, so we want you to come and to, uh, uh, to purchase, to bring things in so that we can make sure that those are sold and all of that money will be going to our congregations in the Philippines, um, so please make note of that date. And also, uh, today, there are healthcare reform uh, conversations. Uh, they'll be in the Ryland Room. There'll be uh, one in English at 1 o'clock, and then again in Spanish at 3.30. Uh, it's a busy day for us at Founders today, uh, but there's also a, a wedding expo downtown um, all afternoon um, at the LA uh, Athletic Club, uh, and many of the church staff will be leaving directly after the 11 o'clock service to go down there. Uh, we also have a number of volunteers who are already there setting up our booth, um, and so uh, things always seem to happen on Sundays. So um, uh, we'll be, we'll be da traveling down afterwards. So uh, just bear in mind uh, that we will have a very, very busy day here at Founders today. We're also uh, joined this morning um, from uh, El Paso Los Files, uh, which is an organization that we've begun to partner with, uh, beautifying the, uh, the, some of the, the space here in Los Files. And uh, we have Nathan here this morning who's going to come and talk to us briefly about uh, how we can get involved. So let's welcome Nathan as he comes up uh, to the pulpit this morning.
Thank you, Reverend Neal, um, and thank you all. Uh, yes, I'm actually uh, from an organization called Green Space Los Feliz, and we are um, a group of community members here in Los Feliz uh, who are working to put more green space uh, in the neighborhood, parks, uh, gardens, and uh, as a matter of fact, our first um, project is uh, beautifying the area in front of the Los Feliz post office here on uh, Vermont. And we're working with the Theodore Payne uh, Foundation um, to put in a native plant garden. And so we've been working on that a couple weekends uh, here in October. Uh, Jeffrey's been helping us out. And uh, so we've done a lot of the, um, the digging and the contouring um, of the, the landscape to make it a place uh, where we can catch stormwater runoff. And um, we're going to be planting uh, some drought-tolerant plants next weekend, uh, November 16th. And um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to ask MCCLA if you guys would be interested in um, helping us uh, maintain the garden, uh, which would entail going out there and watering um, a couple times a, a month. And um, so far, our experience has been fantastic as we've been out there building and working. Uh, we've been meeting our neighbors and getting to know each other. Um, we've had people, we had a woman, Gloria, who was coming back from the hospital. Her sister, unfortunately, is dying of cancer. Um, and she saw us out there and she said, wow, this is exactly what I need. So she got in, she got her hands dirty. Um, she got to meet a lot of us and really uh, walked away with uh, just a, a feeling of... Um, you know, of neighborliness. And so we would like to invite all of you to come join us um, as just, you know, the beginnings of kind of extending our neighborhood and getting to know each other. So um, we'll have a table outside, uh, Jeffrey and myself, uh, you know, we'll answer any questions you have. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Isn't it wonderful how we get to be part of this community as we build relationships with our neighbors? And we build those relationships this morning in this congregation as we turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome. Let's affirm that we're in the right place this morning. God bless you. reading Luke 20 27 through 38 some Sadducees came up this is the Jewish party that denies any possibility of resurrection they asked teacher Moses wrote us that if a man dies and leaves a wife but no child his brother is obligated to take the widow to wife and get her with child. Well, there once was seven brothers. The first took a wife. He died childless. The second married her and died. Then the third, and eventually all seven had their turn, but no child. After all that, the wife died. That wife now, in the resurrection, Whose wife is she? All seven married her. Jesus said, Marriage is a major preoccupation here. But not there. Those who are included in the resurrection of the dead will no longer be concerned with marriage, nor, of course, with death. They will have better things to think about if you can believe it. All ecstasies and intimacies then will be with God. Even Moses exclaimed about resurrection at the burning bush, saying, God, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God isn't the God of dead men, 
but of the living. To him, all are alive. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. invite you to be seated and uh, after reading of the scripture Reverend Melissa turned to me and said okay preach that <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so join with me as a word of prayer as we ask God to reveal what God has for us this morning let us pray loving and gracious and holy one you who call us your beloved and we who get to call you our God bless us this morning as we come into this place of worship Thank you for our sisters and brothers and each person that gathers with us today to join in friendship and in fellowship and joining together, knowing that we are stronger together. We come now together to hear from you so that in our lives we may truly be a reflection of who you are and who we are becoming. And so through this word and through this act of worship, give us something that would encourage us on our journeys of faith and encourage us to go back into the world so that we might not just believe, but we might act on that belief. And so, almighty and loving one, I pray now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be found ever acceptable to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So our scripture reading this morning came from the gospel according to St. Luke and uh, couldn't help but uh, reflect on the little titters that were going on as it was being read, uh, especially that little piece that says, in this world we seem to be so preoccupied on marriage. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's been a good preoccupation for us as, uh, as founders of Metropolitan Community Church and uh, what a joy this week to see even more states now coming out for marriage equality. Uh, and yesterday we did a beautiful wedding here in our congregation for uh, two, two guys in our congregation and uh, the flowers this morning were left for us and uh, it was just wonderful. We, it was, yes, I think it deserves a round of applause. And I want to tell you, when I get to say those words at the end of the marriage ceremony, now by the authority vested in me by the state of California, and now by the federal government of the United States of America, I have to say I do feel a little important to be able to convey those words. It really is a joy to be able to celebrate marriage. But the reality is that in our scripture reading, we were confronted by something that Jesus was confronted by. And he was confronted by this religious sect called the Sadducees. Now, we need to understand that in first century Jerusalem, there were many theologies that were emerging. Uh, many groups of people who believed that they had the truth over the truth of others. Not dissimilar to our own society today. We know that there are many people who believe that they have the truth or the truth uh, rather than a whole truth. And I think something that we've come to learn as founders MCC is that there are uh, many, many truths. And those truths, so long as they coincide with the ways of peace and joy and hope and faithfulness, uh, those truths can coexist together. I have to say that's the one thing I like on the bumper sticker that I see these days of that coexist going down the street. Uh, reminding ourselves that we live by this faith and not every single one of us has all the answers. But all of us together have some truth that will enable us in our faithfulness and our faithfulness 
faithfulness of our journey. Uh, but we know that there was these religious right, these groups of peoples who believed that they had the truth. And if you didn't believe their truth, then you were going to go to hell in a handbasket. That there was no way that you were ever going to get into this dominion of God. Uh, and Jesus was uh, one of the faithful. And we need to understand Jew, Jesus was a Jew. Uh, we need to understand that because he studied rabbinical law. In fact, Jesus is often called rabbi um, in the, uh, the scriptures. You may remember some of those famous Christmas scriptures that we'll get to share in just a few weeks' time, uh, where Jesus is called rabbi. He's called rabbi. Uh, and Jesus himself would have studied Torah. In fact, we believe he was a rabbi and uh, studied in that way and, and, and brought together this, this truth. Now, rabbis were very different to Christian clergy. Rabbis understood that when they gave their definition of Torah, uh, that they were giving their understanding of what it meant to be, uh, to be a faithful person. Now, Christians sometimes can be a little bit different. When Christians, especially when preachers stand up and they speak, uh, they believe somehow that they are God and that what they are saying um, is the absolute truth uh, of who God is. Now, we don't believe that here as founders. We know that our clergy can be uh, fallible. Um, although I'm trying not to be. But, you know, we know sometimes we can be fallible and we reveal the truth as we understand it. And we, we understand that truth in the context of culture, in the context of social location. We, we know that context within who we are today and that we believe in a living Word of God, that the Word of God continues to expand and continues to, to understand as we evolve as human beings. Now, Jesus believed in the resurrection. And that's a good thing because he was resurrected after Easter. Uh, and so we're glad that he understood and knew about resurrection. But the Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection. Uh, they believed that once you were dead, you were dead. That was the end of it. Um, and so that uh, there was no resurrection. That we went to heaven uh, and that we believe that as Christians on that final day will all be resurrected. And we'll all find what it means to be living in that perfect will of God. The Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection, and so they came to Jesus, just like they had come to Jesus on many other occasions. Not just the Sadducees, but the Pharisees and many of those other religious sects would come to Jesus to try to trip him up. They wanted to trip him up because they wanted him out of the way, because Jesus was causing too much of a disturbance in first century Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus was a revolutionary uh, and a rebel in many ways. He was one of those progressives that we would call today. And he was out there and he was challenging some of the religious doctrine that had kept people from relationship with God. Now, there was a motive to why Jesus was challenging these people. He was challenging them because they believed that they were the only ones that were going to get to heaven. They believed that they were the only ones that had the truth. They believed that they were the only ones that could even enter into the holy of holies, to that place of redemption. And Jesus was far clearer that, you know, there was many ways in which we were going to get into heaven. And Jesus' way was the way, the truth, and the life. Yes to have that relationship with God that went beyond sacrifice, that went beyond just the, the normatives of his day. And so he began to tell people that God loves them just the way that they are. And we've seen Jesus being challenged on many ways, that wonderful way in which Jesus was challenged about uh, 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 um, well, many, many different theologies. I'm going to get back to that thought in just a second. That's what happens when you preach extemporaneously. Uh, sometimes you lose a thought. Um, but, uh, uh, but Jesus was challenged on many things. And today he's been challenged about whose wife is it? Can you imagine what Jesus must have been thinking when these Sadducees were going through this litany of, of, of who was going to be married to this woman in the afterlife uh, if you believe in resurrection? And I can just imagine Jesus. You know, Jesus must have been a very patient man. You know, sometimes I think when our calendars we like, look, just get to the cut to the chase. You know, but Jesus was sat there, and I can just imagine this conversation as the Sadducees were. You know, they must have cooked this one up. Can you imagine they must have been sat around saying, "Okay, how can we trip Jesus up today?" And uh, you know, here's the theology that we believe in, and let's see what Jesus says about this. And so he come, they come to Jesus, and they say, "So and you heard the story." So here's this man who gets married to this woman, and uh, the, tr the, the law says that once the woman is no, lo no longer married, she's a widow, and if there is no child, that the next brother in line has to marry her. Now, we know that we believe that there was a sexist society there, and so the woman only had any purpose in life or any standing in society if she was attached to a man. 
Now, we don't believe that today, and I know I always have to say that because otherwise I get rotten tomatoes thrown at me uh, by the women in our congregation. Um, and sometimes by the men, uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, you know, and so we, we, we contextualize this scripture. We don't believe that today, but uh, they did in their day. And so when, when the woman was widowed, she would have to immediately be taken care of and married. Now we know that that has great significance even in the story of Jesus, because when Jesus was about to die himself, he made sure that his mother was taken care of by other men that surrounded him so that she would not be left alone. And so Jesus is confronted. First wife, first husband dies, no child, gets married to the next brother. He dies, no child, gets married to the other. She, he dies. You know, the story goes on until all seven, I love the way this scripture says, all seven have had their go. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one this morning, but, uh, but uh, there, is, there is no child out of this. And, and then Jesus is confronted and says, so when they die, whose wife is she? Well, I know it sounds like good Mormon theology to me. She's probably married to all of them in the afterlife, you know, uh, um, but taking care of, I mean, can you imagine if she's taken care of by seven, not just by one? She's going to have a life of luxury um, in that heaven. But Jesus, I think Jesus is reminding us this morning is that so often we sweat, we sweat the small stuff. We sweat the small stuff about doctrine. We sweat the small stuff about who's right and who's wrong. We smet, smet the small stuff about life and death rather than realizing that we can't figure out some of these big theological understandings and that we're perhaps not supposed to have some absolutes, that we're really just supposed to be focused on what it means to live life to its fullest and to live life in the moment and in the day that so often we're so concerned with the afterlife or with death or preoccupied with something that we'll perhaps never understand, and we miss out on the very moments of what it means to be engaged in life, to really seriously be involved in building our relationship with one another, building our relationship with the divine, and building relationship with the way in which God encourages us over and over again to show up in this world. And you and I at Founders MCC, you know, we've learned what it means to live in the tension of knowing that our truth is our truth, but our truth does not need to coincide or even to conflict with someone else's truth. That the reality is that we as God's people are on our own individual journey with God, and that coming together on a Sunday is not about indoctrinating ourselves. It's not about saying, well, you have to believe this in order to get into heaven that you don't have to believe this in order to be in good relationship with God, but that we are somehow stumbling through this life trying to figure out what it means to be deeply spiritual and to hold on to the values that God has given us. And that yes, there will come a time when we will die and well, I truly believe, now I know this is not a theological uh, thing that the scriptures say, but I truly believe that in this journey from this plane to the spiritual plane, whichever direction that is, that in this, this moment of death, perfection arrives. And that everything that we have had the questions for, or that we have tried to grapple with, you know, who's gonna be married to who in the afterlife, all of these questions that we grapple with here on earth are answered on the way up on that way to heaven and that perfection comes. I know I've got my list of questions. How many of you have got your list of questions for God when we get there? You know, I wanna know from God, why, why did the Philippines happen this morning, this week? Why do natural disasters happen? I've got some, some thoughts about it, but I know I've got my list of questions and I truly believe that all of those things that have perplexed me in this life, just as the Sadducees were perplexed by this question, just as the Pharisees were perplexed by many questions and sitting around and contemplating their navels over, that in this journey from this plane to the next, all will be revealed. I've had to say to many LGBT folks in our community, especially those who have been rejected by friends and family, and especially by moms and dads, 
And I've had to say to them, especially when their parents are aging and they're dying and they know that they are not included in the family, and in those moments of loss when, when parents die and we're not sure whether they really loved us or not, I've had to say over and over again, I truly believe that that moment of death, that that moment of death, all the questions were answered. And that I truly, truly, honest believe that our parents, especially those who have been rejected, suddenly know that they have a child who is loved and is acknowledged by the God that they are just about to meet. I don't know about you, but that's very comforting to me. And I think about all of my questions. I think about the Jerry Falwells and the Pat Robertsons, and I think of all of those things. I, I have this wonderful image, and I know it's not true, and some of you have heard this before, but I have this wonderful image uh, that uh, Pat Robinson and Jerry Falwell and all those can't get into heaven until I die and get there, because I have to go past them and say, see, I told you so. <laughs> and, I, and I know that's not gonna happen, that's just my fantasy. <laughs> Because I truly believe that in that moment of death, all of our questions are answered. And that life and death come together in that moment. So that all truth is revealed. Even truth that perhaps I've held on to as deep-seated in my own experience may not be so true. But that God is gracious enough to answer all of those things and to allow me to find that perfect place. So the challenge for each and every one of us is to be present in life and not to complex our lives with these big questions, but to come together as community and to figure it out together, to figure it out what it means to be in relationship with God, to figure it out what it means to be a person of faith that lives in community one with the other, to get our hands dirty in the soil of life or perhaps even in the soil outside the, the post office in Los Feliz. Um, it, I have to apologize, it's not something that I'm really good at. Um, <sighs> but I know that somebody has the gift of gardening in the congregation this morning. But to be and to take our place in this world and to live every moment to its absolute fullest. Because I believe in the resurrection, but we are a long time dead. May we live lives today. Not trying to trip Jesus up or trying to trip up other peoples in their own experience of God, but being faithful to what we believe and to live from that place of value so that everything that we do, all that we are, all that we say points back to the values that we see in Jesus. And if we could live just that way, then it really won't marry, matter who we are married to in the afterlife. All that matters is that when we finally meet God, God will say to each and every one of us, well done, good, and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but that's good enough for me. And I hope it's good enough for you. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious and holy one, thank you that uh, Jesus didn't sweat the small stuff, but rather challenged us to live lives faithfully and to live lives developing and knowing the relationship between God and each and every one of us. Thank you that Jesus confronted some of the hypocrisy of the world and calls us this morning to also challenge the systems and structures, especially in churches, that take some people out and say only some people are allowed in. Help us as a vibrant and inclusive and progressive community of faith to lead by example so that we know that we can coexist with theological difference and in lifestyle differences. But that the one thing that draws us together is not our sexual orientation. The thing that draws us together is that we are in relationship with you. May that be sufficient 
as we live this life to the honor and glory of the one who gave us life and who sustains us in this life. To God be the glory. Amen. Ramirez Roseboro, and I'm a board member. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you hear friends or maybe coworkers talking about a topic that you're fond of, and you know they're not talking to you, but you want to add your two cents? Mm-hmm. I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> whether, it is, whether it's a topic of the weather, uh, um, a crisis that another country is going through, whatever that topic may be, but you want to add your two cents. Well, I want to encourage you to more than adding your two cents, add your 10% to to MCC. (laughs) And the great things that we do, join this conversation, join this action, and you shall see the great things that we do from feeding many families with our food pantry, having the consistent hands that put together the brown bag lunches that we serve at Skid Row. Just so much, such an abundance. And of course, by adding your tithes, you contribute to that, as opposed to maybe me adding my two cents in in a state of gossip, let's say. Here, what you add feeds 
our fellow brothers and sisters. What you add ensures that children will have a better tomorrow because of a gift that you have made. And so I want to encourage you, and even being mindful of, the, of that parable within our Bible referencing the widow's might, that tiny something that absolutely makes a difference, but still being conscious that it's not the might that builds that temple. Please join me in making your offering and your tithe today. you please join me and extend your hands in a blessing and prayer heavenly God we thank you we thank you for all that you do through us and within us God with this small token of gratitude we ask that you multiply it that your work be done knowing and recognizing that the greatness is in store because we choose to have you and your son Jesus live through our hands, our words and actions, always fulfilling your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you. join us as we pray. Creative and guiding spirit, we bring this prayer with particular remembrance that just as we shall always have the poor among us, so it is also our work to notice and to help. Mm -hmm. We pray earnestly for the strength of vision and of mind to respond thoughtfully to needs throughout the world, such as the need for better and cheaper cook stoves. Their wide use would not only save lives, but would also help mitigate global warming. Global warming itself with its threat to food security. Child pregnancy. An estimate says that two million girls younger than 15 in developing nations give birth each year. Legal and social support to identifiable groups such as indigenous women in Latin America who have not shared in the overall prosperity of their countries. We pray for challenging, meaningful work for young people throughout Europe and the United States. It is altogether too easy for us to succumb to despair when we confront such problems. Bless us with the grace not to yield. Lack of hope can lead us altogether too quickly to lack of help. But strengthen us to be mindful of the troubles of the world the ones whose existence we pray may be more transitory. Where there is progress, as in the destruction of chemical weapons in Syria and the headway in discussions between the government of Colombia and the FARC rebels, grant us generous spirits. Where there are threats, like the possibility that violence in Central African Republic may turn into genocide, we pray for the leaders of the world May you favor them with good judgment and determination to pursue right action. 
where conditions of war, as in Syria, displace millions and put them in the need of humanitarian outrage, we pray for relief and generous financial support. This world is a needy place. We have named only a few of the issues that call out for help. Give us the courage we need to address these and other needs of the world in whatever way our circumstances allow. Now hear us as we join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Often think that God is out there somewhere, distant and uncaring. But God hears our hearts. God sees our struggles. God walks with us as we try to be faithful disciples. In a moment of silence, let us come to the one who is as close as our very breath, the very breath we take in this moment to confess the brokenness of our lives. Please join with me in the words of our community prayer of confession as we say. Gracious God, have mercy on us. You know our hearts so well. Touch them with your grace. You see our deepest fears. Heal them with your peace. You hear our secret longings. Speak to them of your hope. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The one who searches our broken hearts has found the way to mend them and make us a new people. The good news is that everything God has done in Christ is for us, that we might be made whole. With kindness and justice, God makes us a new people. We will sing our thanks through all eternity. Great is God and greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. God is with you. And also with you. People of God, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the one who heals our brokenness. Let us offer our thanks to God who has prepared this table for us. We will bless the one who offers us life in every moment. Therefore, in this time and place, with all those who have gone before and those who will come after, we join in the song of all creation.
love, understanding, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. As we come to the table of grace, as we are offered all your gifts, we remember what Christ has done for us. For on the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples, taking bread from the table, he blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. And in like manner, following the supper, he took from the table a cup. Some say the cup of Elijah, the prophet. He blessed it and offered it up to them and said, Blessed and drink of this, all of you. And in so doing, remember me. Let us pray. Send your spirit upon the gifts of the bread and the cup and upon your children who gather in this place. Fill our empty hands with the bread of life that we might take justice and peace to the outcasts of the world. Touched our parched hearts with the cup of grace that we might be poured out for the broken and lost in these times and places. Heal us with the peace of this joyful feast that we might become your people of hope. And help us receive of this meal this day in giving thanks for the veterans and giving thanks for the aid that now moves towards the Philippines. Giving thanks that we too are called to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in this world. And then when this world passes away and time has come to an end, we will gather around the table in your new realm of grace, singing our praises to you for all eternity. God in community, holy in one. Amen. 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 So at Founders MCC, just like every MCC around the entire world, we practice an open communion. What that means is that you don't have to be a member of this church or any church. This table was prepared by Christ for the people. And whether you come by yourself, whether you come with friends, with family, with a loved one, with many loved ones, you are in community because you are here. And if you're not physically here, you're still part of our community. So we invite you to come to this table as well. It's our tradition at Founders to take a wafer, to dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice and place it upon your tongue. If you like, we can also offer a prayer of blessing. You are free to receive a wafer and dip it and place it upon your own tongue. There are no rules. If also you would like to receive communion just between you and your God and not have an individual interfere with that, there will be a station of consecrated elements to your right that you can go to at any time. So if I could have the servers and the acolytes to please join me. This feast has been prepared and let us enjoy. Amen.
So as we prepare to go out into the world once again today, I pray that we may learn some valuable lesson that will encourage us on our journey of life and of living. And just as they tried to trip Jesus up with their theological nonsenses, may we resist the temptation to trip one another up with our own theological indifferences, but rather coexist in this church and in this world. And who knows, when we finally get to heaven, who we'll be married to. It might just be fun finding out. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship. given and the blessing of God known as creator, savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace. joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast 
not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews. We are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are.